This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. The voice you're listening to is that of Alex Bennett, and I do a program called The Ramble, and it starts every night about uh, 10.05 Eastern Daylight Time, and wins its way on till midnight. And we hope you'll join us for the entire show, because we have a great comedian on tonight that we're going to be talking to in a moment, and then after that, we're going to go to people who are going to be this citizen's panel for tonight. That's not more, not one person, not two people. It could be upwards to, we've gone upwards to 13 people all discussing all manner of things. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, we got to talk to a really old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been having a problem getting Bobby on Skype. We were going to show Bobby to you, but unfortunately we can't, but we can let you hear him, and that's just fine too. Hi, Bobby. I thought we were recording this whole time. Now we're going to go do that rant again, how much I hate Skype and how much I... I don't want to talk to people or I look at people. That's like going out with people when I can just stay home. <laughs> and every time you call me, it never seems to work. I don't know why we have to do that. I never use that stupid FaceTime thing. You know, I would use FaceTime and then my, my wife or my late wife or my girlfriend or my daughter, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not camera ready. I don't have my makeup on. And it's just a fucking pain in the ass. It's just easier if we do this and just get it over with. Just do it as audio, right? Yeah, do it as audio. I, mean, I yeah. think your imaginary listeners will be perfectly happy. I, I think so. You know, listening and, and, to it and they as are, watching it. They, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 well, it, they actually, I find that when I do somebody and I actually have the video of them here, it it, yeah. it, it, it does get more people watching it, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Well, why don't you, you look, you must have 100 pictures of me. Why don't you oh, just start oh, I'm, flashing? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, pictures. I'm sure as this uh, is playing right now, I'm running a picture of you. Well, you should. There's a and lot of I am going to go out and find the worst looking picture of you that I can find. Did you find it? No, but I will go looking for it because I'll, I'll play ah. this uh, a day later and I will have time to research the worst fucking photo Bobby Slate and I can find. You know what? I, over the years, have saved so many photos and so many articles and so many pictures and, you know, so many people have sent me photos and taken photos. And I don't think there are any bad pictures of me out there. I don't know if there's such a thing, <laughs> if it even exists, you know. There are better pictures of me than other pictures, but I think most pictures of me are pretty good. You know, I'm still writing this book, and it's going to take forever. I'm going to put pictures in it, but there's so many pictures, I'm thinking about just making it a picture book, you know. Well, yeah. like they right, you know, every picture tells a story, as they say. And well, you should just do it. You should just do it in Egyptian hier hieroglyphics. Yeah, that would be good, or, yeah. or pig Latin. Pig yeah, Latin, good. yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, I'm glad you called. I'm. Uh, it's so great to have the whole summer off. I think the last time I spoke to you, um, well, I saw you in May when mm -hmm. I we went to that show and you met yeah. my new girlfriend. And right. after that, I think I had one week of work. And then um, June, July, August, I'm not working. It's not by my own volition. It's not that much work out there. The work's drying up. It's either for, you know, all these comics with Netflix specials, all these young kids on Comedy Central. And I'm really happy having the summer off. As a matter of fact, when you told me you wanted to do this, it kind of fucks up my day because I have to rearrange my drum lesson, <laughs> my practice schedule, my <laughs> gym workout, uh, my I got to go do lots of my pool. Yeah. And then I got to get out of here so the maid can come and clean the house. I can do this every day. I go to the grocery store every day. My girlfriend comes over. We take a jacuzzi. You know, I cook. She blows me. She goes home. And I watch the news. <laughs> it's a great day. It's really perfect. It's a great lifestyle. Has, has uh, having a girlfriend now, let, let, let's, let's uh, we, we should tell people that your, your wife passed, what, about a year ago, was it? Um... She died the day before I got a girlfriend. She passed away, <laughs> and I got a girlfriend the next day. So I'm trying to remember, you know. Um, we mourned my wife's death, and we celebrated our anniversary back-to-back, the -back, usually Friday, Saturday. Because yeah. um, uh, I wouldn't have a girlfriend when I had a wife. No, my wife, my wife died kind of well over a year ago. Wow. It, was, uh, it was March 23rd, which was about four or five months ago. Uh, um, she died a year. So yeah, she'd, been, she'd been gone a year, almost a year and a half already. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and my girlfriend's husband, late husband, has been gone um, over two years. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, I told you that story already. It's an yeah. amazing story. But, you know, I met her at her husband's memorial service. So it was, um, and my wife is still alive. And my wife passed away three months later. And I called her up. I don't, I don't know if I tell you the story. But, you know, her husband was a big showbiz manager, a uh, producer. Yeah, and, he, um, he was, uh, he, and was, he was part he, of one uh, of the biggest, one of the biggest agencies in, in Hollywood for comedy. Yeah, he was really, he was a pretty important guy. Yeah. And, um, not that I'm not, but, um, <laughs> um, the, he was, you know, he was an old friend of mine. I knew him for 40 years. I knew him from, before I knew you, I knew him from when I was a doorman at the boarding house in San Francisco yeah. at yeah. the Funk the Nightclub. Yeah. Remember the boarding house, right? That was still... Yeah, yeah, when you when you came to San Francisco, was that still no, there? No, no, that was I'm closed. Going. It was closed by then. It was closed by then. Wow, it, it, it's just amazing how long it is. Because um, you were in San Francisco over 30 years ago. So anyway, I was a doorman there, and I met him. You know, he was working with Robin Williams. That was got kind of close to 40 years ago. And he'd been with his wife 15 years, and I never met her over the years, ever. And so after her husband passed away, I said, you know, we should, because we're neighbors, you know, she lives five minutes from me. And I said, we should get together for a drink, you know, with or without my wife. It wasn't any kind of dating thing because Teddy was still alive. Yeah. And then Teddy passed, and I called her up. I said, yeah, we should definitely meet for a drink. And not to date. We should just meet because... You have a lot... Well, but to begin with, you have a lot in common and a lot to talk about. Well, not just the widow and the widower, but, you know... Yeah, but Her still. husband was a good friend of mine, and, and she lives literally five minutes away in LA that's like next door neighbors five right. minutes is next door neighbors so um, so we met up at the Beverly Glen Center yeah. uh, at, at Herb Alpert's got this cool little jazz bar restaurant called Vibrato we met up there for a drink and she was telling me um, how she, when she met her husband that they, they were in the Palm restaurant you know the famous Palm in Beverly yeah. Hills yeah. and just coincidentally they sat her under his picture, under his caricature. And she goes, well, who is this guy? Why, why, why are we sitting in a restaurant under his picture? And um, she thought it was kind of a weird, obnoxious thing, even though he didn't do it on purpose. They just happened to be in the restaurant at that table. And so I took her to Rayo's, one of my favorite restaurants mm -hmm. in New York. They opened up here in Hollywood. And I made sure that they sat us underneath my picture. But I didn't <laughs> tell her. And I said... So we sat in this corner booth. She didn't yeah. even notice my picture above the table. And I said, by the way, you know, you were telling me about your, your late husband and how weird it was to be sitting in a restaurant underneath his picture. I said, by the way, I'm a lot like him in many ways because I will only go to restaurants and sit under my picture. So there's only a few restaurants we can go to in L.A. And, you know, she turned around and there was my picture. So that's pretty funny. That, that's wonderful. That was, that, well, I, and that, I, was our, that was our first official date. Yeah. Uh, now you know, uh, it is. I've never talked to anybody who who lost a mate. Okay, and then the next person they found has just lost a mate. It, it must. There must be something really good about that, because um, the two of you know yeah, what you're good, going through. Only, yeah. Well, you know what it is. I I, I heard it's a pretty common thing, mm -hmm. but um, not common. Common. Not like every day, but. Uh, you know, it's like winning the lottery, one in a million people, but it does yeah. happen all the time. But, um, you know, it was very odd. Yeah, it was really odd. Did you find... And, you know, when I... Yeah. Go, ahead. That? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, do, do you find, though, that people chastise you because you found a girlfriend so fast? Because uh, the reason I'm asking that is uh, Patton Oswalt lost his wife, yeah, you know. know, in a very right. a tragic way. And right. she was very young and not totally unexpected. And um, uh, now he is engaged to be married to somebody else, maybe a year, year and a half later. And I hear people online, when he announced it on Facebook, were giving him a bad time about it. How could you do this? I you heard that. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Well, first of all, I kept my thing kind of secret because uh, she's very shy and very private. And, you know, it wasn't because her husband just passed away. She just didn't want it out there. So, but, you know, they say, I don't know if this is a Jewish thing or an American thing or just a cultural thing. I don't know what it is, but they say, whoever they is, I don't know who they are, who they be. They is but them. They, they say you're supposed to wait a year before you start dating. But then, you know what, I don't know. Hey, that might, that's like my mother said, you're supposed to wait an hour before you go swimming. It didn't make any sense. You have to wait lunch. Right. You know, you have to wait an hour. 
I never, <laughs> I don't know who, who makes these rules. I think it would have been odd if at, um, you know, at my wife's funeral, I would have been hitting up on her, you know, a month later. But, um, but it was, it was a solid year. And, um, it was a solid year that Teddy was gone. Um, it was over a year. So, yeah. you know, and, uh, so no, I mean, nobody gave me any crap about it because, like I said, I didn't make a big thing about it. Well, I'm not when I heard when I heard about board. when I heard about this heat that Patton was getting on on the internet, I thought, how terrible are these people? You know, everybody has a right to mourn the way they want to mourn in the amount of time they want to mourn, and no one else has the right to tell them how they should do it or not do it. Well, I, I first of all, I again, I didn't really I haven't been posted any pictures of us. I mean, I posted one online on our way to New York, you know, for my birthday in May, but that was, you know, well over a year after my wife passed away, but um, yeah, it wasn't like we started dating a couple of months later. That yeah. would have been kind but of did you, did you get any? Did you get any heat from people about that at all? No, because actually I've never said anything about my okay. girlfriend online. Yeah. I haven't put anything on Facebook about her and um, yeah. you know, only because, you know, I'll probably get positive stuff, but I don't want to, you know, you put something on Facebook, you know, and, and, and social media and Twitter and you know, um, um, you know, you put a, a picture of the spaghetti and meatballs you just had at Rayo's, and then people go, uh, "How you know? Uh, have you ever tried this restaurant?" You know, just I, I don't want to start talking to everybody, my imaginary Facebook friends about, you know, my girlfriend, whether it's pro or con, or you know, just discussing my personal life, really. So, I mean, you know, it was weird. I'm suing the hospital and the um, the doctors that were responsible for her death. So, you know, TMZ, I certainly didn't go online and say anything about that, but anytime there's a lawsuit filed, it is right out there. Uh, because people started contacting me on Facebook, uh, good luck with your lawsuit against the hospital. How do people know about this? And then I see the TMZ, but so they have Bobby Slayton, the pimple of comedy, uh, him and his daughter, Natasha, are uh, suing the doctors at hospital, respo responsible for his wife's death. And then I look at some of the comments, and most of them, People are going, good for you, you know, that hospital, uh, my, my mother died there, and yeah. you know, doctors can't be trusted. But there were a couple of people that put another whiny, liberal, uh, Jew comic whose career is over who do anything for money. See, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, really? Um, uh, you know, that's, why, I mean, that's, why, that's why I hate Facebook. I mean, I use Facebook right. to promote myself. Uh, uh, look how much it's done for me uh, but to promote myself and to put this show out but I've quit posting a lot of stuff on it because I, well, I not, every yeah, time if you, if you yeah. just post something and say it's a beautiful day today you get people going yeah you're just a liberal that's the reason it's such a nice day yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know well yeah you know and it's um, and it's not just Facebook I think that's just the most obvious you know platform that's out there now but whether it's Twitter whether it's your, your website whether, no matter what it is you know and, you know, when people talk about these Internet trolls, that's all these assholes have to do, you know, with their time, because they have no lives, and they're just pathetic. And I mean, I understand if you say something bad about the president, who we both, of course, despise, and somebody makes a comment, or you, you comment about a musical artist, but when you put something personal about, you know, my wife died from soon hospital because they did kill her. And then, you know, and then you see there are idiots who just, oh, you know, people do anything for money, you know, and it's people like you. And like, really? So just douchebag. One of the and, reasons, uh, one of the reasons you sue for something like that is to put the hospital on notice that they can't get away with it again. You oh, know, absolutely. You're helping, I mean, some, you're helping somebody yeah. else down the line who's going to be protected more absolutely. by the hospital than, than you were. You know. Well, you know, the, the, the main thing, of course, is I'm suing because I want the money for my wife's death because her, her death was totally avoidable, 100% uh, avoidable. And um, I can't really talk about it because we're in this big lawsuit now, but um, totally avoidable. That's why I'm suing. And I, you know, of course, want the money. You know, I, all the time I had to take off for work. And, you know, you want some compensation. I mean, you know, if, if somebody in your family gets killed and they pay you a million dollars, you know, and you hear these stories all the time, it doesn't bring the person back to life, but it does give you some solace and some financial freedom and, you know, to enjoy your life. But, but almost as important, because I'm not going to win a lot of money because of the laws in California uh, with malpractice, but it's just as important to. You let people know that the hospital, the doctors are treated in this way. Now, I might not be able to say anything when the lawsuit is done. There might be some kind of, uh, you know, 
a clause where I'm not allowed to talk about it, so I'd rather not talk about it now. But um, yeah, you know. Well, you know, I'm but, in the, I'm, uh, in, I'm in the middle of a legal thing regarding this apartment. And here's the thing that must be driving you crazy, is how slow the process works. Incredibly slow. I mean, uh, I have been three years, and we're not even really before the judge yet. You know? Um, I, yeah, well, I've got a lot of friends that have sued, and, you know, people put it off as long as they can, and then they pay off at the end, they fight you, and, you know, uh, but, you know, it, it's it's fine. I'm not in any hurry. Yeah. I just really want justice for what happened to my wife, and... uh you know, and it was an awful situation. But mm-hmm. again, you know, it's great having this new girlfriend. It, you know, the whole thing was kind of odd. Well, I've met her, and you're, and you're very she, fortunate to have met her because she's terrific, you know. Oh, by the, by the way, but yeah, she is. I'm sorry we didn't get to spend a lot of time together when I came to New York. You know, yeah. we we're very busy. But that's the other reason I wanted to do your, uh, uh, your show today is to tell you yeah. um, that I'm coming to New York in three weeks with her for business. For four days, and probably will not have time to see you again. Oh, okay. Well, I'm used to that. <laughs> no, you're used to that. No, but I, we're coming in on a Saturday night, and Sunday we have dinner with uh, my brother, my other brother down in the village. Yeah. Monday, we're going to, uh, we have, we have an important dinner thing, and, and then we, i got to take it to the Botanical Gardens a little Italy, and then i got to go see... I got I have been there for three or four days. I know, I know, you know, I know, I know, and, I do, and you know something, I, I, the thing that I love about you is that when you can't see me, you call me to tell me you can't see me. <laughs> well, you know what? You know you know what happened the last time we were in New York and we saw you? Okay, we were yeah. there for five days. Yeah. We wanted to take a vacation and just wake up and just do what we want when we want to do it. Yeah. You want to sleep in? Yeah. You want to go to breakfast? You want to go to a museum? You want to take a nap? You want to go to a movie? And I made so many plans for so many people that it was almost like a tour thing. The bus leaves at noon for lunch. We've got to be back here at 2 so we can change. We have the 5 o'clock dinner. We've got to go see Alex. We've got to play. You know, and it was like we're running around having to see people. And I said to my girlfriend this time, let's try not to see anybody. And again, we're getting caught up, you know. And it's and then everybody gets mad at me if I post something. You're in New York. You didn't call me. Well, then you don't you know, post. Kind of, then you don't post. And and when you you know, I found that sometimes when I went like back to San Francisco or something, I right. wouldn't tell anybody I was going back to San Francisco because then I could take my my chances on who I wanted to see and not see rather than offend people by not seeing them. Okay. Yeah. So the best thing to yeah, do well, is to just not tell yeah. anybody you're coming. Like you just told me you're coming to New York, but maybe I can't see you. Well, I mean, I wouldn't know if you were in New York or not. You know. Right. So right. I mean, uh, uh, it's just best if you just if you if you don't want to have to pressure yourself. That's why I tell you when you say you can't see me, I go okay, fine. I don't want to yeah. pressure you. You're my friend. You know. Well, you know what? What I don't want to make more of my social plans on your show here, but you know what? My girlfriend is seeing some clients, you know, for a jewelry business, yeah. and uh, if I have a moment where I can get away, I will certainly call you. Well, You're at the top of the list. I'm at the top of the list. Yeah, right. Well, You're not at anyway, the top. anyway, let's You're get the, let's get to other. You're near the top. You're what? near the top. There's it, other people it, for it. I You're know. close to the top. Am I up there with Woody? Um. Well, Woody, I know is out of town, so you. <laughs> Past Woody on this trip. Um, you're above Feldman, if that makes you feel better. I'm above Feldman. Great. I'm happy. Uh, that's it. That's okay. gold. That's gold. Right. Anyway, okay. here's what I want to ask you. You're not working. And you're not working because no. you don't want to work right now, right? No. What, what do you mean? We you no. You're, you're not working. You said, I, you said I don't want to? No, I don't want to work. No. You, you, no, but you're not working right now because you've right. chosen not to. But you, right. were, you were saying that the business is drying up. Right. For so, me. For you, t- why you? Age? No, nah, people found out I'm really not that funny. It took them a long time to catch on. I made a lot of money. You know? Like P.T. Barnum. You know? Whoever said a sucker's born every minute. Whoever gets the credit for that. But, um, 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 no, the, um, it's, it's, a, no, it's, well, it's a few things. You know, I, I, it's fine. What it basically is, you know, there's, a lot of new great and bad, but a lot of new comics coming along. And, you know, people our age, when I say our age, I mean just over 50, yeah. you know, or over 60, 
don't want to go to comedy clubs, don't really want to go out, don't really want to be in clubs with, you know, boorish assholes and Kardashians and teenagers and morons and drunks and people on their cell phones and jackasses. And, you know, I mean, people just getting more boorish and more horrible and more obnoxious and more drunk. You think things would be getting better. There's just so many more fucking assholes out there than ever. And, um, you know, it's like me. I used to love to go to the movies. I mean, this this week, me and my brother are going to go see Planet of the Apes only because it's 3D and it's a movie like a Star Wars movie. I have to see it in the movies. But I just as soon sit in my fucking house with my Blu-ray player and watch Netflix. I, why do I want to go out? You know, I, you know, I think a lot of people are like that. You know, with the parking and the DUIs and the douchebags and the traffic and the, you know, the horrible behavior. So I, I think... Unless you've hit it, got it to a point like, you know, my friends Louis C.K. or Bill Burr, Amy Schumer, we play in theaters. People aren't going to comedy clubs. Not not people our age. You know, let me, let me ask you this, though. Uh, I mean, uh, you um, uh, oh, now I forgot what I was going to ask. See, that's what happens when you get older. You forget what you were going to ask. People, you know, people in their twenties and thirties are going to comedy clubs, and people my age and your age don't want to be sitting in there with them. Well, oh, I was and, gonna, uh, I know what I was going to tell you though. He, you, you want to know one of the problems with going to movies today? Yeah. I, f- I figured it out. Yeah. We went to go see Dunkirk the other day, and it's playing down uh-huh. at what I call the Comfy Chair Theater. It's a theater with these lounge chairs and stuff. $20 a ticket? Uh, no, actually it came out to about 15 and a half a ticket, okay? Yeah, but it, right. and then, Because it wasn't in 3D. If it was in 3D, it would be more like 40 okay? Right. Okay, so it's $31 for the tickets. Then I do the popcorn, Right. right. That's another fifteen dollars, right? right? So now what are we up to? We're up to forty-five bucks, let's say. Uh-huh. Okay, then there's a cab to get me there and a cab to take me home. That's another twenty-five dollars. How much right. money have right. I just exactly. spent to go see a fucking movie? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's the thing. You know, and it's it's. I think you know. Get back to the comedy club thing. It's the same thing. Uh, people want to go out to eat first at most comedy clubs. I mean, you know, the improvs have to have delicious food. A few other clubs specialize in Comedy Magic Club in Mosa Beach. Um, but, you know, most comedy clubs have pretty mediocre, crappy food. A lot of times, uh, you know, mediocre service for one reason or another, you know, and, you know, short staffed on occasion. Somebody calls in sick. That happens all the time. And, you know, and, it, and then, you know, if somebody's coming to see me, they sit through the two opener comics. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Uh, sometimes it's a table of drunken bachelorettes talking in front of people, ruining it for them, just like they're ruining the movie for you. So there's a million reasons why. Um, and with so many comics now and so many people and, and the entertainment dollar being stretched so thin, um, you know, I'm not you, telling you, know what always, you, know, you know what always bothered me, though, were the people who became comedians because they wanted to get, they almost bought an act so that they could be seen and then make movies and never have to go back on stage again. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Now, to, well, a, that's, to, that's, to a guy, yeah, that's, that's, but in your yeah. case, you're a real, you know, you're a true comic. You know, I mean, you're you're what comedy is. You're in the great tradition of all the Borscht Belt guys, right? Yeah. Uh, people and, just and, had a, like a, one of the classics. Yeah, I like, we, but I like that, though. That's you know, that, and that's great, but it's got to piss you off that you meet up with people who just bought themselves an act so they can get seen and get the fuck out of Dodge and make movies. Or you have know a TV what? series. It's fine. It's, but showbiz has always been like that. There's a lot of pretty people that can't act, that, you know, are, are acting because they want some horrible sitcom because they're good looking. And they're, you know, it's, it's, it's showbiz. You know, if you let it get to you, it gets to everybody. I mean, I've certainly had a lot of major disappointments. But, you know, I've had enough great little things happen. And I've worked with, a, you know, they haven't been big parts, but I've worked with some of the best directors you know, working today, I mean, from Wes Craven to Barry Levinson to Bill Condon to Amy Heckerling to, of course, Woody Allen. I mean, I've worked with the best of the best, and um, they've all been great and supportive. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm friends with all the top comics today. I know that, you know, I can look in the mirror and I can go, sounds so cliche, but I did a good job. And, you know, it's fine. And I put a few dollars away, so I don't have to work my ass up as much as I used to. Uh, and it's all good. And I'm... Not getting sick whatsoever of being in my house and, uh, you know, and going swimming and cooking and going out to eat dinner with my girlfriend. And it's nice because my wife, uh, God, her and I have more in common than she had with her husband and I had with Teddy. Not to 
besmirched. You, their, no, you're not besmirching, you know, but you, but their you, memories. but and, huh? it's, and it, but it's it's sad that the two of you have to be have something in common, and that something in common is tragedy. You know, yeah. I, it, it, I'm sure you would rather not have had the tragedy. Let me put it that way. No, I, I actually know. wasn't even thinking about that, Alex. I was thinking more of like we have so much in common. Even though she's uh, ten years younger than me, we pretty much, you know, and we don't like exactly the same music. But it's not like dating a, a, a 22-year-old who, who says, you know, who's Bob Dylan, and yeah. uh, you know, I mean, we have a lot in common. It's so like we like the same food. We like to sit home and watch Netflix and have dinner. And we both love the same kind of wine and the same kind of music, and uh, we both love me. So, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, I've, and I've told her, you know, she's so afraid that in my act, you know, the girlfriend jokes are going to replace the wife jokes. And I said, you know, as long as you keep giving me back rubs and cooking me dinner and blowing me and you stick to the plan and you don't deviate from that, I have no way to make fun of you. You're blowing me and making me dinner and giving me back rubs. But if you happen to deviate and go off, you know, the off, plan. Off I, I can't be responsible for the jokes that might come out of that situation. <laughs> so I think she's blowing me more out of fear, not love, but it's okay. I'll take that. I, I went for 25, 30 years without that, so it's okay. Oh, yeah. Any reason I can get her to blow me, whether, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll put on a tutu if that's what turns her on. It's fine, you know. I think with so that. So far, so good. Yeah, I think with that, we'll probably bring this to an end, but can we do this again soon? I really enjoyed this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I got to go jump in my pool now and take my dog for a walk and and um, continue my lovely day. Yes, I will try. I will call you when I get to New York. Okay, I'll tell but, you that I can't. I don't have time to see you, but about two or three weeks will come in. And I'll call you. All right, and I'll check in with you from time to time, and we can uh, do a little uh, little uh, just t- talk like this because I really enjoy. Yeah, it. And, I'll, and I'll send you some pictures of me so you can post them so we don't have to look at each other. Yeah, but I'm, right? I'm going to go look right now for the ugliest picture of All you right. I can find, ladies and All gentlemen. Right, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you, Bobby Slate. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Wow, there was Bobby Slayton. It's like old times. I love Bobby. You know, Bobby's my, uh, uh, of my comedy friends, the oldest and dearest one that I have. And uh, my friend's probably one of the oldest and dearest that I have. Um, Jack Bishop is another one because he's been around a long time. Anyway, I just, uh, I really enjoyed talking with him. And we wanted to do video, but we couldn't do video because, well, Bobby doesn't know how to work <laughs> Skype. So we had a little problem there, okay? But we don't have a problem with you. You know how to call using Skype, right? Well, then do it right now. I'm going to turn on the, uh, I'm going to turn on the uh, line here. Hold on a second. Uh, and go online. And I got a whole bunch of little items here. I, I actually did some... Um, uh, uh, Stretch over there. See, I did prep today. I did some prep. You know, that's so that's why you got to call me because I actually did prep for a change. Anyway, uh, if you don't know how to get in touch with us, go to gabnet.net. Over the right hand side of the page, it'll tell you all the different ways to get a hold of us. There's a phone number there if all you want to use is the phone. But if you also want to learn how to use, uh, 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 you want to learn how to use. Uh, Skype, uh, all the information on how to use Skype is there. Uh, you can't beat it. it it's uh, all the stuff you need to know. And uh, it's all at gabnet.net. Over on the right-hand side of this page, you even have a button you can hit that says call. And if you've got your Skype open, that's all you have to do. It will dial us. Okay? So um, give us a call. Uh, and uh, if you're if you've got Skype and you're ready to call us, uh, our, it's GabNet Live is the uh, is the number uh, to call. So that's uh, one of the things that we can say as well. We can accommodate as many people who want to call. I don't know that I'd want to get you know upwards into the uh, range of 15 people at a time because that could be completely. Uh, unreasonable. But anyway, over there, look look who we got here, ladies and gentlemen. It's our old friend, Phil Meyer, the man everybody loves to hate on this program. I, I thought you were the guy that they love to hate. I, I thought so, too. But, you know, you, you've <laughs> taken that away from me. You just, uh, I'm, I get more nasty things about you than anybody. Of course. You know? So I, 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 I am the anti uh, Clinton, the anti-Obama, uh, the uh, the anti-Obama. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Here comes uh, here comes uh, Kevin. Uh, he's calling, and uh, Mike is calling. Of course, Mike calls every one of our shows. He, he, he's like what we call a chronic. Hi, Mike. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, turn your uh, audio off there. There you go. Okay, that's good. Uh, no, but uh, I get a lot of I get a lot of heat for uh, for you being on. Yeah, well, I guess people don't like to uh, hear what they don't want to hear. Well, I mean, let, let's face it. Um, uh, they, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, and I. That's why I keep you on. I mean, I don't want to hear what you have to say, but I I keep you on because you, uh, uh, you know, you you add something to the discussion. If I left you out, I would not be doing my job. You must to convert. Huh? Yeah, it, it would be really nice if the discussion wasn't, uh, oh, he's nuts, or he's this, or he's a cocksucker. Yeah, but it wouldn't be uh, that. It wouldn't be that way, Phil, if he wasn't nuts and a cocksucker. Yeah, no, but, you know, there's there's a way of having a conversation. No, and, there's, uh, uh, there's you but, know, but, it's, no, it's, not, no, it's no. not healthy. This guy, I have determined, uh, here we go, Trump already, this early in the show. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to talk Trump. Uh, I've been no, watching I, no, the but, uh, wait a minute. Let me, let me say what I'm going to say, though. Is I've gotten to the point where I'm just going, this guy's this guy's crazy, you know. Uh, let me yes. see. And Scott Boddicker right. has joined us, and Patrick has joined us, and I want to ask Cat Patrick about something that went on in Wisconsin in the last couple of days. Uh, but anyway, what were you going to say, Phil? Uh, you know, uh, I think Scott's right when uh, he pulls out when there's uh, this, you know, kind of yelling and conversation that you know, it's nuts. He's a this. He's a that. You know, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't. I don't, I don't think. I don't think that's why Scott leaves. I think Scott leaves because he doesn't. Yes, want, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You, it is. you leave because why? Well, it was. It was getting. Uh, uh, it was getting ugly, and and yeah. uh, I just, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of people on, and you didn't need me, and I just didn't want to listen anymore. I kind of waved and. Yeah. Well, but I, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to be rude. I wasn't trying to be rude or no, anything. No, no, but, no, 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 no. But. Uh, 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 a lot of respect uh, for that, I man. also feel that sometimes you leave because you don't want to get you you don't like oh. it when you get broil, roiled up, as it were. Yeah, well, it, yeah. it was it was it was both ways last night. I think a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. and I'm just I just didn't want to hear it anymore. And I call yeah. in a Jax, and it's yeah. more civil. Yeah, it's, it's well, that's more civil. Yeah. It, yeah. It, now there's a show on Netflix called uh, Ozark. Yeah, I've been and, watching it. Yeah, I've been watching it too. It's not bad. It's not it's good. Kind of like it's Breaking not, Bad. It's not. not as, it's not good. What do you mean? It's like Breaking Bad. It's not even close. I know. Well, it, it's, it, not, it, it's not. It's not. as good. It, but, it, uh, it, it's, okay. it, it's not okay. It really. I, I, we're finally down to the last episode and a half on it, and uh, I, I. We both look at each other and go, "Why are we watching this?" Really, I'm only on episode four. Yeah. Well, you know, it. It just doesn't. It's all about uh, trying to launder money, and they try to explain it, but they never explain it. You never get what laundering money is. Well, he's at the point where he's talking to his son, and he's actually laundering the money. He's got it in a bag with he's, marbles or something in it, and he's got it in the laundry machine. Well, you have machine. to make the money look old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. It's just not great. You know, I'm waiting for something great I can wrap my self around uh, the bbc just released uh, all six episodes of top of the lake season two i don't know if you're familiar with that show but no. uh, it was done by uh, this Brit uh, this uh, australian director um J J J campion uh, jane campion uh and uh, uh i'm looking forward to that uh you know and i was watching as shecky told me to watch a 1932 uh german film uh, yeah, was made was made just before before Hitler took took office, and it's it was in, it's that, I had fun watching that, and, and then all day long I was missing the fucking cat. Yeah, subtitles. And, and then I found out because Jack had to come back and and get his glasses, which he left, and half of the kitty litter potty thing, and mm -hmm. uh, he said that cat really misses you. He said, <laughs> he, he was he, he they said he was depressed all day. She was really? depressed all day, and and I think part of it was is that we have this huge apartment, and they're living in like a one bedroom apartment. Not that there's anything wrong with that; most people do. But we have this huge place that for a cat, this is like 
things. We, we referred to it, and, and everybody's referred to it. They've referred to it. We've referred to it. And even my friend Shecky today referred to it as a summer camp for cats, you know. <laughs> a playground. Yeah. Uh, and um, But it's nice to know she misses us. You know, we miss her desperately. She just was so sweet, so wonderful. And Are they going away again? Huh? I'm, I'm giving them money to take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> My uh, neighbor's bloodhound today yeah. ran with a bunch of kids. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they practiced their uh, field deal. Yeah. And the dog got loose, and the puppy ran with the kids. Yeah. All the way around two times, and the dog decided, Okay, twice is enough. Walks home, scratches at my neighbor's door. Yeah. Marks, walks in, drinks some water, and he slept all afternoon. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. He, the kids just wore him out. Yeah. But anyway. But, so, the, but the coach said, though, the dog ran faster than the kids did. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, all we've, been jo- years. we've been joined by Rob Alfano, and of course, Patrick has joined us. And uh, I was, I, I, this would have been more appropriate, I guess, last night, but it's still appropriate tonight. You live in Wisconsin. Aren't you happy that Foxconn is coming to your town so that you can have your people jump out of buildings because the well, working conditions are so bad? What? Well, I'm happy because um, most of the jobs are going to be at around $53,000 a year. But, no, that's that's what they say. However, Foxconn Fox, is no Foxconn said it. I know, but they are fucking are liars. You, are you going to apply Wait for a minute, one? Let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Wait a minute. Let me, let me just yeah. say this, yeah. Alex. In Wisconsin, as you know, and everybody on this panel except Phil and I hate Scott Walker. Our local paper thinks they hate Scott Walker more than they hate Trump. <laughs> okay. Now, they have given Walker credit for this deal along with Paul Ryan and of course Trump has to have a little bit of it by bringing the Chinese you know over uh, the meeting but anyway I will goddamn to you if this $53,000 wasn't at least legitimate at the beginning this paper would have dismissed it out of hand. Well, they in haven't. Fact, do, they haven't done that. Yeah. On, before I came on, Alex. Yeah. I read the, the latest um, column that they wrote about it. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure, because this paper hates Scott Walker, and if they could find the flaw, they will find the well, fucking flaw. Let me let no- me throw some of the flaws at you. Number one, Foxconn has been notorious for lying about what they're going to pay people, and then coming in much cheaper because they try to get away with the lowest possible price. In fact, in, in China, not only were people jumping out of the windows, but the people there were going on strike and they were, they were, you know, they had a terrible relationship with the people working for them. But there's one other factor here that is the main factor, and that is if that factory gets built, I'll eat my hat, okay? And let me explain why. They have said they were gonna build a factory in, in Pennsylvania. They didn't do it. They said they were gonna build a factory, I think in Bangkok or somewhere like that. They didn't do it. They come into these places, say they're gonna do something, and then they don't do it. They're notorious for that. Well, what yep. is 2013, Foxconn plans $30 million plant in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Why are they backing out on those? They didn't back out, they just never built. They just don't. They say they're going to do it, and they don't. They do it, say they're going to do it, and then they don't. Exactly. Now, oh. Is Pennsylvania a right-to-work state like Wisconsin? Because that's part of the draw, too, is there's no union requirement here in Well, bing, bingo, you say there's going to be a $53,000 a year salary? Bullshit. Foxconn, if they can get away that's with the cheapest possible price, why, they will. But that's why I said the paper who is union up the ass and hates Walker and would love to find fault with this, can't do it yet. Now, you may well, find, no, you can't. You can't do it yet. Yeah. You can't do it yet because nothing's been built or not built, you know, but... So, Rob, Rob... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Kevin had a question. I was what? just saying, so, Rob, the, the silver lining that we were looking for last night, I think just went to shit. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's I I felt I didn't really know good that about much it about last Foxconn, night. but I'm learning a little bit. Well, there's a big article on uh, there's a there's a big article about them in CNN Money, and I mean, you know, you could say CNN that their CNN is going to be slanted, but facts are facts. If they plan on building a a plant in 2013 in Pennsylvania, thirty billion a thirty million dollar plant, and it isn't there. Yeah. You know, that, well, this is fact. the this is the very company that everybody a few years ago was talking about as just being a horrible employer and taking advantage of the of, of poor workers in China and paying them substandard wages. But because they come from the country where they don't make anything, they at least are making enough money to send back to their to their kin, as it were. Uh, yeah. but, but the fact of the matter is that this company has been notorious for years for horrible working conditions. And now in the plants that they have, they're replacing people with robots, right. okay? So they're right. trying to get away the cheapest way they can, and if you don't think they're going to do that in the United States, you're nuts. Well, yes, you know what? I don't yes, fault them for the robot thing. That's the way business is going, and if they're going to put robots in, you, you can't yeah. stop progress. But, you know, it, it, will they even build it? I don't think they're going to build Will it. Will they employ anybody? They've, they've, they've been notorious for saying they're going to build, and they never do. In fact, I think the only factories they still have are in China. They haven't built them in these other places they said they were going into. Yes, Phil? If Patrick gets a job at this Foxconn, they're guaranteed he won't, he won't be able to jump out the window. Yeah, they, the, uh, yeah. We're too high, and he, he can only roll right. up to it. Yeah, well, all, <laughs> I, all I'm saying is uh, is the biggest uh, money-making thing in, in Wisconsin, and if I were to move to Wisconsin, I would start it, is a, a company that makes nets. Uh, because they're going to, you know, this, this company has been, no they, have, they had nets, cool. they had nets all around the, the all around, huh? Really? And, and then what they did is you could pay them money to live at Foxconn because a lot of these people came from the countryside and whatever. And then they, they got them into kind of a situation where they were, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Indentured that servants, company. indentured servants. Yes. Uh, uh, uh Patrick. One thing I will say is the amount of RAM that they're going to use, uh, it probably will not be multi-storied enough that anybody jumping out of a window... <laughs> Make them all one-floor buildings. <laughs> Might sprain well, an ankle, huh? Right. I mean, where they're building it is actually right between Milwaukee and Chicago. That, that's the plan. And it on um, more rural land than city land mm -hmm. and so they have the ability to expand out uh i forget how big the campus was going to be but um so it, it's not like they're building in downtown milwaukee mm -hmm. where they would only have a small footprint and yeah. would have to build up they can build out so i i think Maybe they'd have to put some kind of ban on arsenic or other things that people would want to commit suicide. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of that valley they called it? What? What that? What was the name of the valley they were gonna they're gonna put it in? They called it some valley, and it sounded like Silicon Valley, but they were calling Wiscon Valley or something. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're calling it. Uh, yeah, Death something Valley. Silicon valley. But um, yeah, it's located in it's just south of where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, Mike. Isn't that sort of like what you're saying? Uh, uh, but it's almost like uh, like the old days, the company. If you work for a mining company, you buy stuff from the company store. If you lived on well, the that's property, what they did. That's friend. what they did with a lot of these people. See what happened in China. China, uh, the people who went to go to work, get jobs at Foxconn, because there were a lot of them there, were people from rural areas. Uh, who, that uh, the people who lived there were poor. And so what they would do is they'd go to work for Foxconn, who would pay them really what you and I would consider substandard wages, but the kind of wages that they could send back home some money to their families and help support them. And uh, uh, it, uh, they had no place to stay, so Foxconn says, well, you know, we have these dormitories. You pay so much to stay here. Oh, by the way, you can also buy food from us. You can buy this and that and everything. And what they did is they had a lot of the money back into the company from people that they were charging for these services. Somebody it's, 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 it's almost like, it's almost like um, 
so many mining companies used to do. Well, yeah, no, that's what you said a few moments ago, Mike. Yeah, yeah. same <laughs> thing. Like, what, like Walmart. I don't see anything wrong yeah. with it, you know. Uh, some of my guys buy supplies for me. You know, I can buy it. It's and, not and, the uh, same thing, Phil. And uh, they're but, not you know, forced China, to. They're not forced to. Right, but in China, it, it's different. When they come over here, they're no, going to have to play it, by it, our it, rules. It, 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 uh, believe me, if Fox, if Fox, I don't think this thing's going to get built. Okay, so I, it may be a whole moot argument that we're having here, because it, this company is notorious for being fucking liars. Well, and, and on top of that, there's a disparity between. What some people say are the number of jobs created, I think the first number I saw thrown out by Foxconn was up to 3,000 jobs. Uh, they, said, they said they may create uh, in 10 years, within 10 years, another 10,000 jobs, but that was just, you know, uh, pie in the sky eyeballing it, you know, lowballing or highballing it or whatever. And, and, and immediately Trump goes on, the, uh, on, on uh, television or on Twitter or Twitter or whatever, Twitter, on Twitter, uh, and, 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 Twitter. and yeah, yeah, That's the kids Twitter. are using the Twitter. Uh, um, uh, what's the point I was trying to make here? Oh yeah, uh, and and says, oh, we're gonna, it's gonna yield thirteen thousand jobs. That's not even what Foxconn said. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Uh, it, it. If they, uh, uh, the other thing, uh, the state of Wisconsin is going to give them, a, they're going to drop a $3 billion in subsidies over the course of 15 years. Um, didn't I see some, didn't I see a figure of about a hundred, for every person that's hired, it is costing the state of Wisconsin $129,000. I think that was the number I saw. Think in, about that. In paybacks to, the, to, to Foxconn. If there are three billion, if there are only three thousand jobs and they're giving out that much money, then the the salary should be way higher than that. Do the math. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, with the yeah. trade, with the trade things that are going on, uh, like the Pacific uh, uh, thing that was struck down, uh, and the anti-China sentiment, uh, at least for the next four years, uh, and the possibility of tariffs. Uh, for materials that go there and then come back here, it makes sense that they're going to set up here. I mean, Honda did it, Toyota did it, even BMW and Mercedes builds cars here. Uh, you know, it's it just makes sense for them to start uh, in, ma manufacturing in this market. The, the problem is you're you're thinking about the good old glory days where you put a a, a factory line of people, multiple factory lines of people to work. This is the age of robots. You'll have these buildings, and they'll be with a, a few supervisors in there managing the robots. It's so not going to be big employment. And eventually, and eventually, and, and, robots, and, and, eventually, yeah, and, and, and eventually, eventually, they'll get technologically uh, adroit enough to be able to have robots managing running, the managing the robots. Yes, right. Patrick. But you know, they'll have to get uh, the Mexicans to mow the lawns. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, one of the things that is being discussed um, over radio here, which is a real issue, is being able to fill the jobs. If if they were to build here, because Amazon uh, just built it, or is building a large uh, uh, distribution center here, and uh, I forget, uh, oh, um, the makers of gummy bears from yeah. Germany. Haribo? Haribo? Yeah. Haribo, yeah. Yeah, they... They've already started uh, building, a, I think it's the only U.S. plant here as well. And the thing is, we're not sure that we have enough people to fill those jobs that are manufacturing type jobs versus four-year college degree, sit behind a desk, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So, um yeah, with, with the FOTCON, if they do it, it's still going to be like two years out anyway. So if that's the case, maybe some of the local uh, tech schools can move people in that direction. Um, because if those wages well, are... Well, I, I, I think if, if, let's say, all these companies moved into that area and the jobs, there were jobs there, a lot of people would migrate from the rest of the country. Oh, to go absolutely. get jobs there. And there are some Mexicans coming over the border, too, who might want to. Well, so, <laughs> so in Amazon, 
So, I mean, they're already here. Well, you I mean, know, it, it, you Amazon mentioned. is Amazon's huge for robotics. You, they, they don't really hire, employ they, they that look, many people. They're going to deliver with drones. Hey, you know, you mentioned Amazon. They're at uh, they, they're at a half a trillion dollars, and Bezos is one billion away from being the richest man. No, in the he world. already is. I read today he is. No, no, he isn't. He dropped out of number two. Dropped down. Yeah. They, 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 no. the, the, what, the thing I said was is that he was number one, but not for long. So maybe what, oh. that, what that meant is, depending on the way the stock market went today, he could be number two. Yeah, yeah. He is number two. Uh, again. So who's number one? Well, number one is, is Bill Gates. Gates. But here's the strange Still. thing about Bill Gates. And this will show you that you can be good and, and make a fortune at the same time. The price they said for Bezos was about a hundred million dollars, that made him the 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 richest man in the world. He was second to Bill Gates, but not for long. So maybe later, earlier today, something happened, and Gates suddenly shot back into number one. So he would have to be making a hundred thousand million dollars a year. When he started giving away all his money, he only had forty-five million. And now he's Billion. up to a hundred million. He can't, he can't shit enough money to get out of number one. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, the fact is that that uh, you know that Bezos has built what is an amazing company, uh, and uh, nobody is giving him the kind of credit. I mean, they make a big deal out of Foxconn, but Amazon. How many people does Amazon employ in this country and give work to? You know, Lots. You know, so, I mean, uh, uh, Amazon's a real treasure because it's a company that's run here and serves the whole world. And and that's a good example of, uh, of the new American ingenuity. Of course, Amazon has put a lot of people out of business, you know. Uh, we have to take that into consideration. Uh, uh, you know, Alex, computers put us out of business, you know, in the radio business, yeah, yeah. you know, in the television business. It's the way, you know, that's what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm selling products every day that I know we're putting people out of work. It, it's getting easier and easier, and it requires less complexity. And, and this is what these executives want. They want these simple, easy to use. Instead of having all these specialists, they'll just hire a bunch of a couple of generalists to manage it and, and and they'll lower the salaries and and again it's it's maturing business maturing industries come on, eventually they come commoditized yeah so it yeah. is going to become the factories of tomorrow yeah. you know they're going to pay low wages and you know, it's paid very well i was i've been in it for 20 years it paid very well well that's changing because you don't need all that you don't need people with all that knowledge and all that, you know, the, when the, as the easier it gets, the more it's yeah. devalued as a job. My, my IT guy said to me, because I'm moving over to the cloud and getting rid of my server. Well, there you go. And uh, so he said, you know, hey, that's basically, you know, put me out of business. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, and he makes a good living, you know, right. and, and, he, and he realizes that he's going to have what to cloud, start what, working. What cloud are you going to be using? Uh, it's it's called Isagent. Uh, it, it's it's my accounting system, mm -hmm. uh, and it will it's it's now cloud based. Yeah. And well, it's well being what I what I do is like Roku. Uh, I have to. Uh, I'm not paying them much of anything every month. It's a very small amount of data that I'm throwing at them, but I use Amazon Web Services. Well, over time, this will cost me about the same as what a new server would cost me but o over the same amount of time but i pay it monthly yeah. and instead of okay. having a server that within four years is going to be obsolete uh they keep doing the updates and i you know i add users yeah. and, and by, I the, just time, by the time you really get up to speed the cloud will be the the old thing and there'll be something yeah. else you know and they got me up to speed almost immediately it was it was really well done the way they converted everything yeah, and, you know, all they went in. They put well, what, icons. What, let me let me stops. let me ask uh, Rob. What you you work for? Uh, we, you, do we want to say the company? Yeah, I'd rather not. Just okay. say the company. Okay, and, but, but he works for one of, of the major like players in the computer business. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and 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 so you're selling computers to people, right? To companies. Well, I, we don't but, sell but computers, computers, but you're not so selling the same work. computers. What's you, that? You're not selling the same computers that you want you used to sell. 
You're selling well, computers. nothing. Everything's obsolete. You know, we sell things that are almost obsolete now. I mean, that's what know, I'm saying. How obsolete? The problem is things turn over so quickly that uh, you know, yes, today's today's technology is obsolete tomorrow. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. But, but you know, what he's saying is correct, and and companies like mine are are struggling right now because people are not buying those servers. They're they're putting things in the cloud and and. It's causing layoffs and it's causing, you know, it's you can't stop progress. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you could do about it. It's been going on for years, but it's accelerating. Yeah. And, and wait, the, and, wait and the, until the robots come, because then it's really going to accelerate and, and it's going to come so fast. We're going to be overwhelmed and there's going to be a lot of unemployment. Mm -hmm. Has anybody watched people? Of Unless you're a robot. Uh, uh, that's Tim. Hi, hi, Tim. I don't know what's happening to our picture on uh, on uh, uh, Facebook. Yeah, it seems to be cutting. It, yeah. it, it seems to be cutting out. Yeah, it cuts out. It like froze crazy. up all together. Think well, about this. Somebody is graduating college today. Yeah. yeah. What are they going to do for a living before they hit sixty-five? Yeah. Become a robot. No, truth. Truthfully, what are they going to do? What kind of work will there be forty uh, I, forty I, years from now? You, I got you You'll have to go into the law. You have to go into medicine. You have to. Uh... Well, you know what? Even medicine is changing because I, my company supports. Now I still have traditional medical care, but mm -hmm. my company gave me a card that I can tell a doc or something. It's called. Mm -hmm. Everything is online. And then I read an article the other day that more and more robots are beginning to do things that the medic people in the medical field were doing, and they're doing it more accurately. They can look at X-rays more accurately. They can look at at uh, those uh, like uh, MRIs and, and way more accurately than a human can. So you're going to see the medical field be affected by it. Yeah, but who has to well, put the person in the MRI machine? Who has to take the x-ray and, and load it? You're going to use your smartphone, Phil. You won't need those things. Yeah. You're going to have a smartphone blood test real soon. You think you have so? A smartphone, uh, they have a smartphone echocardiogram that you can literally put a chip in you and it will monitor you instead of getting just your blood pressure. You, you'll get uh, like a, like an EKG on your smartphone. You know, That's you know be available very, next year. it's very true, Tim. I, w I was shooting a concert uh, about a month ago, and the other photographer is a cardiologist. And uh, I said, well, you know, what are you looking at on your phone? And he, and he said, I'm, I'm looking at patients', uh, patients uh, uh, you know, uh, readouts uh, uh, real in real time. <laughs> you know, and right. We're in the pit taking pictures. <laughs> you know, some company was trying to say now that they want to uh, tag, put these little things in you. You know, uh, oh, the uh, uh, the uh, sure, seat sure. type of thing that uh, 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 that uh, that opens doors and yeah, it opens doors. You can buy stuff from the vending machines and all that. Yeah, yeah. do time card. It's but you know, like, like, Rob, like what Rob was saying, what is cause two is going to do? Easy, become uh, robot mechanics to keep the robots going. Why you don't think the robots will fix the robots? Yeah, 2037, the, guy, the head engineer at Google said, uh, before 2030, robots will fix themselves, build themselves. They will no longer need humans. And <laughs> attorneys are being replaced by AI already. They're using it for immigration services. Did, did now, you, you, know what, you, know, you know what the, the real people are going to have to do is sign up for universal basic income, which is you know, Zuckerberg and a lot of the big guys. Exactly. Uh, is is saying we got to provide people with the basic income. That's right. Then if they they have talents and there's jobs for them, they can earn extra. Did you hear that, Phil? It's going to be worldwide welfare. Well, yeah, really. That's uh, what it's going to be. No, what else can it be? They're doing you know, that they'll, they'll contribute, now. But there, you know, there's plenty of wealth in the world that needs to be distributed. Well, well think it, about it, it, though. If you can't go to work every day, what are you going to do? There's 330 right now. I think what 330 million people it, in this country. Yeah. How many jobs will there be 50 years from now? Well, we need to bring back the CCC and the WPA because I'm about a, a half hour away from the CCC Museum here in Michigan. We need to, you know, fix up the state parks, go in and, and we, uh, redo, uh, remodel people's homes, you know, retrofit them, you know, Habitat for Humanity type work through the government. 
on top, and that's how you could earn your universal basic basic income. Uh, you know, I was watching a thing tonight tonight on uh, in in Japan, the robots. Uh, they, they have less population, and so they're having to get use robots to uh, to do basic services uh, because uh, the and the the uh, population in Japan is shrinking. And some of the robots that they showed were so lifelike uh, that you thought they were people. There and, will be love affairs with robots between yeah. oh, very human and robots. They can. They, they can uh, I suggest everybody watch humans. Uh, who actually the guy from Google, Cootswell, the engineer, helped write. But they did season two. They only speak, supposed to be one season. I think it's AMC. But it, it, it talks about robots that know they know they exist. They have consciousness. Oh. They're, they're going to get better. They, have, they, have, they feel pain. So. Well, at least they're programmed to act that way. Yeah. Well, after a while, it, be, it gets beyond programming. But you know, you look, you look at this, Dave. Uh, didn't they come out now with uh, uh, some type of robot car already? I think it's in Japan. They're testing it. That's uh, that you can actually sit in it and control it. They're testing them here. Yeah, Tesla's built one. They've already had the the first accident a year ago, May, when the when Uber the when the car Uber. didn't see a. a a semi truck and it drove right underneath it. Uh, there was another one in San Francisco. I think it ran a red light. And, uh, right. Uh, Actually, I think that one that got hit. That was an Uber car, wasn't it? Um, I, I don't. Think yeah, maybe. The other maybe. I think cool. and, and Uber has uh, suspended their testing. Yeah. Testing for because now. of that. Because of that. Uh, yeah, they it took was, it down to Arizona and something happened down in Arizona, so they brought it back here and they said that the DMV had to hold them back. So Alex, Alex, just, Alex has a system that can't maintain a picture and yeah. audio on Facebook. Yeah, which is a I'm trying trying to fix it right. Platform, I'm trying to and you're fix gonna it. let them drive your car. This, <laughs> this, is from the guy, this is from the guy that's on the telephone. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah, absolutely because I don't want to be traced. <laughs> no. but I think I think it's like a bubble car in Japan, where yeah. they can actually yeah. connect. They, they can connect the old. Let's say if Rob has one, he can connect with my car, you know, make like a, sort of like a bus, sort of like. But once you have a robot, why would you go anywhere? You'd just stay at home and travel using virtual reality, and uh, you'd have avatars doing <clears throat> You could have three or four avatars doing your errands, going places, doing your vacationing for you. Yeah, uh, that's why. That's, it's very, very real. That's coming. You can have avatars go to meetings for you. You can be in two or three places at once. Yeah, I'll post on Facebook. I did the one basically going to come also on Facebook. I'll post um, Singularity, which is the guy that wrote the book about the robots being smarter than us. Also, Kurt there's Will. a book called the Yeah Kurtzwell, the Age of Intelligent Machines. You know, he was on What's My Line years ago, and you know what his secret? I've got a secret. You know what his secret was? I've heard he played the idea. piano, and the celebrities had to guess. His secret was it was the first uh, song, uh, piano song played on national television. It was written totally by a, a ro uh, computer with no help, and then he predicted by the turn after the turn of the century, the the computers would beat the master at uh, chess. They would win Jeopardy, which has happened already. And does anybody know how to play Go, the the, the Oriental game, the Chinese game? No. Go. Hmm. My mother it's, used to play a, mahjong. Well, Go is <laughs> is you basically have stones you put on a board, a checkered board, black and white ones, and there's. The, the, in chess, you have the possibility of 10 to the 20th possible moves, 10 to the 20th power. In Go, you had 10 to the 30th power. And one of the computer systems finally beat the master Go player in China, mm. which is, um, you know, <coughs> multitudes time more complicated than playing chess. Hmm. So uh, they're here. Well, you what know was that? You know how I'm here every night? I'm an avatar. Are you really? <laughs> you, you certainly could be. <laughs> hey, I think Scaramucci's an avatar, and they get, they let teenagers control. He's part of a video game, but he's just brought to life by the teenagers, probably. He's still sort of wacko. An avatar I think he's a plan. Shit today, boy. See, I think back he's to trying the to bring. I think Pence is paying him to get rid of Trump. 
to me, it's like a young Polly Walnuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Polly Shore. <laughs> the Body word man. out of his mouth is fucking, fucking. I'm like, what do we got? Oh, all he's got to start doing is going, hey, oh, oh. You know, technically, he's not an employee of the White House yet because he, ha- he hasn't passed the ethics. He hasn't officially started. Yeah. Now, you know, for, he's going to be the fourth person not to get a paycheck, though, even though he's going to be an employee. Now, think about this. You, you have the two Kushners, you have Trump, and then you have Scaramucci. They're not taking a paycheck, but they're certainly going to get remunerated in other ways, possibly How? through some Russian banks. Scaramucci's worth $84 million. Yeah. Is that he, all? He needs a paycheck? Yeah, $84 million. Is that right? year. You know they're going to enrich themselves. Well, maybe afterwards, but... Uh... Uh, but no, uh, Trump, I, I don't think they can lobby for, was it eight years uh, after uh, being in the administration? Did that get passed? I, no, they've was, signed all kinds of waivers for everybody in the White House. They've signed hundreds of waivers. So that's that's a scam. And you guys were talking about the jobs from uh, Amazon? Yeah. And Wisconsin's given them, what, how much is it, $10 million, $50 million? Are they giving them billions of dollars to put those jobs there? Yeah. It comes out to two hundred fifty thousand dollars per 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 worker. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of money but to pay now, for a fifty thousand dollar job. But if you look at Amazon's figures, they're projecting a lot less new employees, and it cuts that down to where they're, it's going to cost almost a million dollars per employee. Patrick, I think your uh, baseball stadium is a better deal. No, nope, probably so. I think it is because of billions of dollars, and you're not going to get that much out of it. You're getting more out of the baseball stadium. Yeah, you see how the Brewers are playing? Are they doing very well right now, aren't they? No, they they did that whole punch. Oh, I thought they were, like, hot. Yeah, they were. Then then the All-Star break came, and then they went back to their same way. Fuck the Brewers and fuck Miller Park. By the, by the way, I've been quiet for the last little while because I've been trying to get us back on Facebook Live, and now I've got us back on Facebook Live. So if anybody wants to go back now and watch the video, it seems to be, oh, no, it doesn't seem to be working right. Yeah, it's still gone, it says it, here. Yeah. It's it, st- you guys see the Boy Scout deal, the apologize for yeah. Trump, what he said? Yeah. I thought to myself, wait a minute, why does the Boy Scout have, uh, you know, you don't have to apologize for Trump. Trump should uh, apologize to the, uh, to the Boy Scouts. Uh, yes, uh, t- uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, we know that one. Yeah. The reason the Boy Scouts had to apologize is all of the fucking people that went apeshit over the speech. And, you know, there have been memes all over Facebook saying that if they, if they don't apologize, then it's like the young uh, Hitler youth and all of that fucking bullshit that, that people get buy into, which brings me to another point, whether it's on topic or not. Mm-hmm. But I have to say, I enjoyed this shit out of yesterday. Listening to this show, I listened to Jack's show, uh, I was watching MSNBC, watching the entire LBGTQ community absolutely fucking melt down over those tweets and thinking that that's how that was going to happen when everybody knows our constitution does not allow for a president to decree anything at the only way he could have gotten that any sort of law or anything passed or, or gotten anything done mm-hmm. and if he had done it by um, what do you call it um, executive it, order executive order it was and just it would a, have been overturned it was a tweet and everybody went ape shit and I didn't say anything on Facebook I didn't say shit anywhere because I figured somebody with a brain somewhere across the United States would say you know what that can't go into effect. And today, the chairman and the joint chief came out and said everything's going to stay just as is until they get clarification, not only from the White House, but from the Secretary of Defense. The Pentagon said they weren't going to do anything. But I think... Let me throw something out here. Today I did something which I haven't done 
all along, and that was I uh, added to my uh, Twitter thing feed uh, the real Donald Trump, uh, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Uh, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing these tweets coming through. Yeah. If I yep. have somebody that I make friends with on Twitter and they post that much shit, I would just, you know, un whatever you do un with Twitter because it is such clutter. It is such clutter. He, 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 he oh, it's, it's terrible. It's just I terrible. That, I turn that, off right? people's messengers. I've turned off people's Facebook. I don't want to see that shit. Yeah, but anymore. what I'm saying is the way he's doing it is something I would normally turn off, and I'm thinking of turning it off. It, it, I thought maybe I'd get some information or it would be entertaining. No, it is just fucking he that. clutter. What? What did you say, Rob? He tweets that much. Oh, he tweets that much? Oh, God. I mean, I was yeah, looking over at Twitter. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 he doesn't usually Twitter after 6 o'clock at night. But he, here's one. Here's one. Uh, here's uh, two. Uh, here's um, three. I mean, come on. Four, I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. And, and, and Patrick, what, to your point, so I think... I think the biggest thing that got everybody stirred up was the fact that he did that over Twitter rather than, you know, the right way. And, of course, he probably knew that so he could stir up the shit. And that was right. my point. I, I did comment today, then on several people read, finally, and I said, look, why do you let him get under your skin? That's yeah. what he's looking for. And the thing is, especially the gay community yesterday, and the transgendered, I gave them more credit than I think I should have. Because the fucking meltdown all over my Facebook feed over tweets that could not be put in the law or even remotely enforced by the military, I was seeing resist this bad, we're gonna play. And I'm like, it's a tweet, it is not even an executive order. And yeah. the people are losing your fucking mind over nothing. And I Alex, that last night. made to some people was... Uh, it, you know, a, you know, you know what? You, I'll tell you. I think... Okay, let me just throw this out there. I, you're right. There was nothing to get frightened about. It's a tweet. It's not an executive order. It's not a bill. It's nothing. It was just him ranting again. But he thought he was effectively... He thought he was effectively making this a law uh, and putting this forward. And the fact that he would even put that forward without any real thinking, I mean, it, it, saying that it costs the government $8 million a year to take care of these people and their needs because they happen to be transgender, when he spent over $8 million just this last six months going to Mar-a-Lago. That was the cost to the government. Each time he goes down there, it was it was two million dollars in cost, and there were at least four of those trips that could take care of every transgender in the service. Yes, Patrick. Think about this, Alex. Yeah. The point is that Trump is so stupid to think that he would have had an effect or made that some sort of a law by tweeting it. Mm -hmm. What did that make all of the people that believed that tweet? Morons. Is my point. Oh, oh, wait, that, wait, wait, wait. American people. I, well, it, it, but, but you, you know, I know you love Star Wars, and oh, uh, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi had a saying: "Who's the bigger fool?" Exactly. You, you know, I, the 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 fool the fool who who does something, and the ones who follow him. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that was the point that I made today was. I gave the gay community and a lot of my left friends that whether they're gay or they're not gay, a lot more credit that somebody would have said yesterday, you know, Donald Trump is so stupid that he thinks that he's making a law, but that's not how it works. And nobody said a goddamn thing. And no, I'm that, no, I know. And, and I'll get to you in a second, Rob. It, 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 all, the, all the news networks were saying this was just a tweet. This wasn't. Uh, an order. It wasn't an executive order or anything like that. They were saying that. But I think I, what bothered I think what bother, bothered your gay friends was just the insinuation that he could do this and that he thought he could do this. 
I, you can tweet out anything, and it doesn't matter. And the other point I was going to make, it's much like you said, the clutter. If people are getting that work up over a tweet, mm -hmm. follow him. Why would you follow somebody that you hate? And you get the fucking worked up, and then you get pissed off, and you're screaming at people. You're writing threads that are 400 uh, people long, and fuck that. Yeah. You know, in yeah, just, right. Look, but Rob has been having his hand up, and I, I don't want to have him well, lose all. I want to answer Patrick because I can't speak for anybody else, but mm -hmm. I know a law isn't passed by a tweet. That's number one. Number two, and I know that in, in my mind, because we're told from the White House that. To take what he says in his twit in his tw on his Twitter account as policy, so I know he can't create a law from this, but I know this is what he wants to do, and I'm, my my assumption is that he's going to put the plans in effect and and get it done, or at least try to get it. You done. You brought up so some, that's number one. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's what is so – that's what insulted me. That's what bothered me about it. I, I mean, I know that he can't just put a Twitter a tweet out there and and boom. It happens, but that's what I think. That's what upset me. Well, I mean, you, you can change how the uh, executive well, branch does things, just like they no longer represent gay people for civil rights actions, which they did also yesterday. Yeah. So and I don't follow him. But but, but they, uh, wait a minute, let, let me let me say one thing, and then Patrick wanted to say something. Uh, uh, you know, you brought it up last night, Rob, that this president is so stupid that he created this controversy on a day when he had a better story to tell which yeah. was the Foxconn thing. In other words, he should have used the Foxconn thing and unpolluted by anything else to say, look, I just created, you know, 3,000, 13,000 jobs, whatever he wanted to say, and use that. But no, he had to clutter up the day with this other thing that made absolutely, you know, just took all the, the, the wind out of those sails. And that was And stupid. nobody talked about the jobs anymore. Cause, yeah. Especially because that yeah. happened at like six in the morning, yeah. and he didn't announce the job thing till three in the afternoon, and they covered it. And for a few minutes, you heard good things, <clears throat> and it really pumped. I told you, it pumped me up. Yeah. I was like, "Well, good, something good's going to happen." And then you were back, to and the, then it went right to it, back to it again. And, uh, and also because else because the the, the uh, story about you know transgenders and all of that was a sexier story than the getting yeah. of a bunch of jobs. You know, and so the, what they're, of course, going to go run off on that with that. You know, what legislation got uh, passed uh, during all of this? Was there anything that? Uh, no, but now now the latest thing. I love this. Uh, the skinny. The, the, what is it called? The skinny. Uh, the skinny version. Yeah. The skinny version of the, the, uh, the health. Well, those guys, those guys are all working right now. I've been watching live coverage. While I was watching the Yankee game, I had the sound down, and I was what? They're still. I'm watching them right here on my iPhone. They're still in the chambers, and they're all. All the Democrats right now have been coming out. I heard Bernie Sanders' speech. They're all talking, and they're going to work through the night on some what they're calling the Morgan Bill, where or something to the effect of that, where they're what they're hoping for is to do this the old-fashioned way, bipartisan. There's this Morgan Bill, I think, that was introduced. Try to get everybody to work together and fix it the right way well the thing so. is that the whole the whole problem here is not to uh, get rid of obamacare uh, in fact let's stop calling it obamacare because you when you use that you're attributing it to obama when in fact yeah. it's the affordable care act uh, the affordable health act uh, and and uh, when people were asked way back do you like obamacare no but how about the affordable care act they immediately went oh that sounds like Rob, a great idea Rob's Rob said last night that people, they, they uh, didn't know the difference between the Affordable Care Act yeah, and Obamacare. Right. Well, no, there no is it wasn't that they it's didn't the know. Thing. No, they didn't. Uh, what? There isn't a difference. But people don't know. If you ask people on the oh, street yeah. about Obamacare, the Republicans put, you know, and the Republicans are great at that. And the Democrats go along with it. Do it. They let them they do let it. They let them yeah. do it. Yeah. They Obama call it Obamacare. Them. They shouldn't do. They shouldn't have done that because yeah. all they did was politicize. It's like a dog you have when you throw a fake ball and he goes to chase it, even though <laughs> and, and you get him every time, right? And they they know how to play the de the Democrats. You know, they yeah. throw that ball and they go chasing it every time. Yeah, absolutely. That's all Obama ever called it was the Affordable Care Act. Well, he even eventually <laughs> adopted Obamacare. Yeah, he called yeah. it Obamacare. But you know that that was a term that was used as a pejorative term for it. You know, yeah, to just, dismiss it, it, to dismiss it, 
and like uh, Obama Obama phones. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, remember we gave the phone. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it, it, it was a it was a dismissive term, is what it was. Yeah. Notice and, the Democrats keep trying Trump care, but it doesn't stick. <laughs> Trump no care. Trump no care. <laughs> It, well, either way, it, it, it doesn't stick. Well, you know what they I heard it you know, stick. today? What you was it? Repeat it more. Uh, uh, Lindsey Graham today. Did you see Lindsey Graham? Yes. yes. He went after uh, went after Obama. He went after Trump. I mean, he literally called him almost a coward. Yeah. He's been going after Trump since the uh, uh, since he was trying to get elected. Yeah. Well, since yeah. he was trying to get elected, but then he kept quiet once he got elected, and you know wants to cooperate with him and stuff. He finally just said, this guy is just a coward. You know, he doesn't confront situations. He just uh, does them uh, uh, through tweets and things like that. And, and he only fired he, people on TV because it was in the script. No, but to hear that coming, <laughs> to hear that coming out of he Lindsey Graham. He didn't. It, it, out of Lindsey Graham is a beginning. And I think a lot of Republicans are starting to be very disenchanted and, and uh, are, uh, don't like what he's doing. Because he's screwing the pooch, so to speak. Well, he's only going to get so far. He promised a lot. Of, he's promised a lot of jobs in coal mines. Let's see how many really materialize. He's promising jobs now in Wisconsin. Let's see how many really mater if they materialize. Yeah. You're only going to get so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to take away your health care, and then you can have black yeah. lung. Well, listen, I got a couple of items here, uh, uh, some of which have to do with. Uh, with uh, Trump and some of which don't, um, Showtime has ordered a new animated half-hour series. Guess what mm -hmm. it's about? Donald Trump. Oh, it's uh, Colbert, isn't it? In, in the, I don't know. I don't. It is. It's executive produced by Stephen Colbert. The satirical program is scheduled to begin airing this fall. The reason it's on Showtime is Showtime is owned by CBS. CBS. That's right. That's right. Um, so uh, we're going to have a cartoon series of Donald Trump. But he's doing it already, isn't he, on his show? Doesn't yes. he have those cartoons? Yeah. So it's already uh, being done. I, I got a question about that. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever seen the TV show That's My Bush, the comedy? No. And that was yes, yes. That was pretty funny. It was, it, it, it was okay. It, it could have been better. I'm, I'm having trouble separating my pages here. Um, there is another story today, and this is a this, uh, oh this this is one you'll love. Um, Larry David went out and had somebody. Uh, there's a show called Finding Your Roots with L Henry Louis Gates Jr. And what it does is it takes people. It's kind of like that show. Uh, uh, who do you think you are? Uh, in which he, he goes out and he finds a person's history and, you know, who he's related to and so on. And you know what he found out? He's a third cousin, of all people, of Bernie Sanders. No kidding. Wow. Yes. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, it turns out right. it's so no well. accident that Larry David pulled off those uncanny Bernie Sanders impressions on Saturday Night Live during the presidential campaign. David didn't realize it at the time, but he and Sanders are related. During an event... The Television Critics Association Wednesday, David said that he recently found out that he and Sanders are not so distant uh, relatives. Uh, David said uh, he, he's a third cousin or something. The family ties served as part of an investigation for the PBS show Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis D.H. Jr., I was very happy about it. I thought there must have been some connection, said Davis, David. Uh, the Curb Your Enthusiasm star noted that the information was supposed to be kept secret until the episode aired, but uh, the report points out that the leak may actually boost the ratings ep episode's ratings. Uh, uh, but that is, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, and, his great wife's impression. a left winger, isn't she? Huh? His wife is in, into the left movement. His Lori David. He, he's no. She, he hasn't been married to her for years now. No, no, no. I know, but. She was, she was a, she's involved in a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, but I think he probably divorced her because she was a pain in the ass. But anyway, yeah. you know, yeah. she, you know, you know what she was. She was an intern for David Letterman. That's where he met her. That's where Larry David met her. Oh, that's you're right. I remember now. Yeah, uh, but the sad news today is 
uh, the death of somebody who everybody here has heard. Uh, oh, yeah, I know who it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, the cartoon lady. June yeah. Foray. Yeah. Uh, She's 99? She was 99. Yeah. Uh, she was the voice of uh, God. Well, she was the voice of Rocky the Squirrel to begin with. Uh, that's Natasha. The one, Natasha as well. Uh, she worked with Stan Freeberg all the time and did a lot of his stuff, his records and his uh, radio show. And uh, she was the, the witch in the Warner Brothers cartoons. Broomhilda, yeah. I think, was the name of the character. Uh, probably the most prolific voice actor uh in in the business outside of mel blank yeah okay and and there were a handful of these people who did almost every voice uh that you heard in cartoons and she was the only female that made the cut with that group there was dawes butler there was mel blank there was uh uh uh, uh who else uh, i'm trying to think there were a couple of others that were were basically uh, primarily the voices in these cartoons uh, well, what's the guy, the, the radio guy? Remember, he did Scooby Doo. What was oh, that guy? Yeah, and then, Casey oh, Kasem. Was no, he no, did no. Casey Kasem. Not Casey Kasem. Yeah, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Uh, he did. He did the. Uh, uh, well, Scooby Doo was his name? Yeah. Rat Shaggy or whatever yeah. hell his name was. Yeah, yeah. But who gives was, a shit? The cartoon sucked. Yeah, oh, I like that. I had the whole box set. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's shaped as the van. You want to get it? You know, of course you, you, know, you did. You're, you're well known as a retard. You know that, don't you? <laughs> no, that's not nice. It's okay. <laughs> no, he loves all the bad cartoons. You know. You by by the way, the by the way, it turns out that I got. I was yeah. talking to my friend Shecky today. Turns out he's reading a book on uh, Harvey Comics. Do you all remember Harvey Comics? You know. Yeah. They did like Casper the Friendly Ghost and like, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, stuff like that, right? And um, he's reading the preface to the book, and the guy who's writing the book says, and I was on a show with Alex Bennett in San Francisco, right? Uh, just in this book on Harvey uh, Comics and says, and then he gives a whole history on me, and then he says that I looked at him and said, Harvey Comics were the worst comic books in the business. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in his preface i am the guy who said harvey comics sucked which they truly really did i mean there was no cartoon character worse than Ca casper the friendly ghost i'm sorry what about you know. deputy dog wait a minute i think we just lost uh, i think we just the lost. Archies. <laughs> he's on his way to get uh, he's, his, he's, his no, things he's out to way. go shoot himself now after i said that but uh, uh, he's gonna go. He's gonna come back with his comics. So I made it. I made it. Uh, you know. Oh, there the video's interrupted again. Yeah. Boy, what is the problem? Yes, with this? interrupt us. Yeah, I'm having some trouble with the. Uh, uh, no, uh, well, I'm not gonna try anymore. I think it's Facebook. Like, no, I don't think it. it well, maybe Facebook. It could be uh, the fact that I'm using a thing called uh, OBS. But let me let me see here. Anyway, well, you got, back on now. Huh? I just see it back on now. Oh, is it back on? Wait a minute, no. Everybody's yeah, moving. Oh, really? Maybe you should use that X split. No. Uh, wait, wait, oh, maybe it is. No, it's not. No, it's not working. No. Yeah, I don't think it's live. It looks no, like it's that's behind. a recording. It's a recording. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's let them drive our cars for us. Yeah. No, let me. Let yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, did Obama do anything uh, by executive order uh, to uh, deal with the L LGBT community in the military? And didn't Clinton have a thing? Was it executive order when he had the no ask, don't tell? Uh, you know, so I'm just wondering if Trump can do something in, uh, to reverse those things by executive order. Uh, 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 I think so. Really? I think he's the command. Most of the Republicans says he's the commander in chief. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering Unless if those other two, to stop him. if those other two things were done by Clinton and Obama uh, and didn't require a law to be passed. I'm just wondering if Trump has the ability to reverse those. Well, regardless, he he can make it. He can make sure that they operate the military to make it miserable for those people. 
so whether they have a bill or whether it's a regulation, he can have, look what they're doing, you know, what they're what doing with all, what they did with the EPA. They don't even have scientists there anymore. He can gut anything that's a law by just the way he implements the executive branch. That's the bad thing about giving the executive branch so much power. The, the, the Congress looks like weakling. Hey, does anybody else think that the Onion took over the two news channels the last yeah. two weeks? The Onion took the it Onion over. The Onion looks like rational thought. With the long of new lines. Yeah. Patrick had his hand. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, um, the uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which mm -hmm. was deal, um, that was phased out by Obama. Uh, yeah. Because that could, uh, gays were able to openly serve that in the military. Right. So Don't Ask, Don't Tell was... It was big. repealed by Obama, but how did he? How did he do it? Uh, I, I, it was, I think it was by. Um, it may have been by law. Uh, I don't remember specifically, but he did have um, a majority. And and Rob had mentioned earlier, and he, he was asking me a question uh, regarding um, you know what Trump had done uh, with the tweets and that, and it kind of signaling to the Congress or whatever this is what he wants to do. Well, a couple of weeks ago, the Republicans uh, helped to pass uh, a health care deal for transgenders. So Republicans are not against this as much as people think. It may be Trump, but again, uh, with everything else, like Alex brought up a little while ago with Mitch McConnell and, and some of the other Republicans that are giving a lot of pushback to Trump, um, I think if something was brought to the floor regarding the LBGTQ community and serving, I don't think it would get anywhere as far as uh, Bill, because I was surprised to see the transgender thing actually pass by uh, Republicans, and it was a, a good thing. I mean, if, if people want to serve, let them serve. I don't give a shit. Right. Hey, there was a bill that came out today uh, uh, on Russian sanctions, and it's ninety-eight to two. And there was a, uh, and it, and it was a, and there was, and when it went through the House, it was a, a heavy uh, bipartisan majority. Uh, veto proof. That, veto proof. Uh, that veto proof. Uh, so now Trump is going to receive these things, I guess, tomorrow. And uh, if he if he tries to veto it, they're going to override the veto. I don't think he wants to see that happen. So therefore, uh, I'm wondering what he's going to do. Is he going to sign the bill, or is he just going to, you know, sit on it? I, I don't, you know, what what can he, uh, you know, his hands are tied. Yeah, his hands are tied. Uh, I'm, I, it's going to be an interesting, it, that's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. By the way, the CBO has just released a late night 16. score yeah. of the mm -hmm. GOP's pared down health bill. 16 million more people will be uninsured yeah. by 2016. Uh, so is that more than the 23 million? No, it's less. No, but no, but it says... 60 million more people will be uninsured. It, I guess that's just a revised no, that's compared to now. That's compared to now. Oh, gee, they've got, they, they, they've, only, they've got it down to 16 million. God, yeah, that's, that's good. good. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's it, close that's to that's Scott, Scott just woke up. It's a, it, it is, right, Scott? No, that's excellent. I, I, yeah. I say we go for it. No, I think we should get skinnier and leaner. I think we should yeah. go low carb with this thing. And, uh, and 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 maybe get it down to where nobody loses insurance. Oh, wait a minute. That's called single payer. I'm sorry. No, that, no, no, I, I know. We'll call it skinny payer. Okay? Uh, skinny payer. You know, that, I have no respect for McCain. He's got three single payer. He's got two single payer plans plus federal employee. And he's, he's voting yes on this crap. Yeah. And he's going through a health crisis. He should know the problem. But yeah, he's got VA, he's got Medicare, and he's got federal employees. Brian, he'll probably make money on that, on his illness. Brian has been uncharacteristically quiet tonight. Is he even on? He's right there. Well, he's not on my screen. Oh, there he is. Yeah. See. Okay. Why have you been quiet tonight, Brian? 
You know, two reasons. Partly because uh, I'm a little tired, but also uh, um, the uh, it's just this the, all, all the shit that's happening with uh, the, all things Trump and the transgender ban or the tweet, yeah. which carries more gravity to me than you know a uh, rancid, ugly tweet by an ex or a uh, rancid, ugly tr- tr- tweet by uh, Franklin Graham or something because this is the fucking POTUS or he, Scrotus. Scrotus. He still has that The Scrotus. Title. Yeah. yeah. Scrotus. Uh, you, you know he why still he did the transgender thing? Has more. What were you saying? Uh, he did the transgender thing because if you want to be a dictator, you have to find a minority so that the majority can hate that minority, which would be the gays and the transgenders. Yeah. And then you convince the majority, you're the only one that can fix and deal with the problem. Then that's exactly what Sessions is that's doing in the, the DOJ. That is the definition of fascism. I just watched the yeah, YouTube video. The, the DOJ by, has become fascistic. Hosted by a uh, high school uh, uh, history teacher who... Uh, has anybody is, seen anybody see the ICE uh, when they had the, the press conference with the ICE director? No. The problem is getting the nonviolent, regular, illegal immigrants to turn in MS-13 and these really bad gang members that torture people and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the ICE director said, well, they should, the, the reporter asked, are you going to deport the nonviolent ones? And the ICE director pretty much said, well, if, if you're here illegally, even if you report MS-13 people, put your family's life at risk, they'll probably still deport you. Yeah, Brian. Gotta, Brian has his hand up. I just got a question for you, Tom. How do you watch all this shit and keep abreast of it and not want to like slit your wrist, crawl into a hole, and or you know well, go on a ring page? It's an I avatar. Well, he he has no life basically, and uh, he spends the whole t- days and nights watching all this information, right, Tim? Well, well, you know, I, pack, I pack it in. I, I I just scan the internet. And I do watch MSNBC and CNN, but I TiVo it, so I skip through a lot of it. Yeah, uh, but now uh, how old are you? How old are you, Tim? How old, you're posting how, to I, Facebook. How old are you, Tim? Sixty-six. Okay, oh. so you 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 probably don't have. You're not working now, right? You retired. No, I, I, we do babysit, and uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty active, but. But I'm saying you, you you know you're pretty well retired in a way, right? So yeah, I'm retired, so I have a lot more. time. You have a lot more time for this kind of stuff. Which and is, I have, and I know you don't like it, but I have Sirius in the car, so I take Rachel. Hey, and, listen, uh, I love Sirius yeah. today. I made fifteen hundred bucks today on Sirius. It, 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 you sold your stock? No, the stock jumped. Really? Yeah, like forty-five cent, forty-five points. Oh, don't say Wait. that. No, no. Yeah, 45. yeah, forty-five cents. You know, forty-five. Forty-five cents. Well, okay. uh, the, the points is they call it points sometimes. I call it cents. Hey, hey, and anytime Alex, I did call I do it the segue t- right. <laughs> well, anytime it's I say five eighty-three right now, right? Uh, is it five eighty-three? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Forty-four cents. Yeah, I wish I had bought uh, ten thousand dollars worth of stock with them when it was at five cents. I was there when it went to five yeah. cents. Yeah, because uh, today I would I have, have several one. million dollars. What? Or they you... gave me options. I got two sets of options when I was there. Yeah, and uh, I only bought one of them. The other one I wanted to buy, and I didn't realize it expired, so I couldn't. Well, leverage you, you it. had to buy it within three years. I didn't realize that you had to buy them within three years, and it was fine if it went to the strike price, but it kept going down and down and down. So I never hit my strike price on those. But they also gave me. Fully vested shares. So I, I got fully vested shares. I was there before well, if, you were. If you still have fully vested shares, then uh, they would be worth something. Did oh, you I sell? sold them all. Mm. I, 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 I think I sold them at around eight or nine dollars a share. Yeah, but how much were how much were they? Ve- uh, oh, they. In other words, they were dollar, fully vested. I think they were a dollar when I got them. Yeah. Okay. So, you didn't do well, bad. Well, that's though. good. You did okay, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait, they were a dollar when you got them? They, no, the eight dollars was when they were higher, and then they kept no, 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 going down. I, I got them in, I got them, remember, I started working there before they went up on the bird. They, we were doing shows into the ether. Yeah. We were getting, we were, uh, you know, I got there in August of 2001. Yeah. So it was right, I got there about a month before 9-11. And we were doing shows up to, the satellites were up, but there weren't anybody receiving it. Right, and they were we were ever getting everything. So I was there. I think they were a dollar or a dollar twenty, 
that they that they told us our price was to buy them and oh you oh, you had to buy them you had to buy them though yes you had to buy them see mine were all just given to me oh okay. they were fully vested shares and uh, uh, you know uh, you know I mean I have to admit that it's not a lot of money that I I made by made so far about twenty thousand dollars you know it's nice on it. I'm you're just, a serious investor. But remember, I was not full time. I was a con. I'm it's shocking because I was a contractor. You know, I had a contract. I did. I was contracted for X amount of dollars for every show I did, and uh, yeah. they gave us those shares at a dollar. I think it was a dollar a share, a dollar ten yeah. a share, or whatever. Well, anyway, they're they're up today. So, you know, I'm ha I, I, I sat at home and I made fifteen hundred bucks. That's kind of nice. You know, I can't complain about that. But anyway, uh, by the way, in case you want to watch us again, we have been up for about 10 minutes without it going down. Uh, and uh, so if you want to go over and watch it on Facebook Live, we've only got three people watching it right now. But Do you remember that? Huh? The, uh, Bill Gates is no longer the richest man in the world. It's uh, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, right. We had that, we had that on earlier. Yeah. Well, no, but that, no, but no. Jeff Bezos is not the richest man in the world now. It's back to Bill Gates again. Because at the end of oh. stock trading today, stocks went up. I think Amazon went down. And so uh, Gates, yeah, that, 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 that's what it's all about. You know, it's this up and down. Because when I saw that Bezos was made uh, the richest man in the world, uh, both um, uh, Bloomberg and uh, who's the other company that uh, reports this news? The NBC, uh, uh, Wall Street Journal, somebody like that, said he's the richest man in the world for now, because it was so nip and tuck that if the Amazon stock went down, Microsoft went up, Gates would be back on top again. So he's back on top again. Do we really care? Well, they're not giving their money away fast enough. Well, that's right. You need to give it away quicker. Well, you know, I, I what, what's, it, what's, inter what's interesting about Amazon, and I was talking to my friend Shecky about this, and he, you know, he studied, he was his, when he was in school, he studied banking and stockbroking and all, brokering and all of that. It, it, to this day, Amazon has not gone into profit. Does Bezos give any money away? Is he a philanthropist? No. I don't think how so. he said that. Is he fine? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he's he's uh, but he, uh, uh, you know, Bezos is uh, he's a right winger. You should love him. Yeah, um, he is, Alex. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Phil, you should like him. I love this. In fact, he, in fact, he bought what newspaper in Washington? The Washington, uh, not the Post, but the other one, the, 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 the dipshit uh, conservative the one Phil Reeves. rag. Yeah. The Washington Times? Washington yeah. Times, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He bought it. Oh no! Or did he buy oh, the, he post? the post? He bought the post. Yeah, he bought, he the, bought the Washington Post. post. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know he did save a newspaper. You know, uh, but he has. He, you did, know, he how, needed some how, how, stuff. How, how, how he has a company? How he has a company <laughs> that has yet to really make a profit, and has amassed as much money. It, it goes against everything I know about finance and so on, and I know nothing. So apparently. The answer is you, something more. You know why Bezos bought uh, the newspaper? Because he shreds. He, no, he shreds the unused, uh, the unsold papers, and he uses it uh, to pack. Uh, you know the things that they ship. I'm sorry, they all come in that air bubble wrap. Stuff. Yeah, I got a box inside. And, stuff. and okay. if they ever stop. Uh, by, by the way, can I take a mo few moments out here? Totally unrelated to anything we're talking about, but I I want to rant and rave. Have you heard about Coca-Cola? No. Uh, yes, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're putting the names in the In box. August, in August, they are killing Coke Zero. Mm. Really? Now, oh. yes. You're the only guy that drinks it. They're killing... Uh, what do you mean I'm the only guy that drinks it? It's very popular. It's gotten very I popular. I drink it. Uh, it it's, it's much better than Diet Coke. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it's, but they um, have a brand that's been out there in Europe and other places, it's been very successful for them. Supposedly, the final formulation on this thing tastes almost identical to, to uh, the regular Coca-Cola. And it is called, and when I first saw it, I said, there's something wrong here. It's called Coke Zero Sugar. Hmm. Now, uh, here's, the, here, here's the problem with it. 
okay? When you look at it, it says Coke Zero Sugar. Now, if you read it right, both uh, uh, Zero and Sugar are in the same font and size. So it really reads Coke Zero Sugar, meaning no sugar. Yeah. Now, Pepsi did that Coke earlier this sugar. year. Pepsi did that earlier this year. They have Pepsi uh, zero, zero sugar. sugar. So they're changing, they're changing the name of the brand and the formulation slightly. And a lot of people are, are panicked because we truly have been, and you probably are too, Rob, vested into Coke Zero, which we really have liked. So I'm going to Costco this week and buy seven cases of the goddamn stuff. You know, the thing is, is when, I drank, when I drank soda, yeah. I like Pepsi better. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because you're an idiot. I told you that. We we know that. You can join. You, you should get together with. Uh, I bet. I'll, I'll bet. Uh, I'll bet uh, Tony likes uh, Pepsi better. Pepsi, right? Actually, I do too. I I think I'm more of a Coke person. So, when yeah. I used to drink soda. Well, the world is divided into two people. My mother used to just buy Two kinds sale, of people, so. Coke people and morons, okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Patrick? Patrick? I'm a Pepsi guy. It might be Republican that writes Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, isn't Pepsi owned by the Mormons? I don't no. know. Or is it, is it still? No, it used to be owned by Joan Crawford. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you remember I Jolt think the Mormons Cola? Owed it now. What? So, you remember Jolt Cola? Twice the sugar, twice the oh, caffeine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Jolt. And and twice the going out of business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, what is it? What is it about zero? I don't know much about it. Well, zero, it zero, zero really. Uh, well, it, you know, has no it has no ca calories or uh, carbs or anything like that. Uh, but it, it, you know, it came out, and uh, it. You know they keep diet pep, the diet Coca Cola out there as well, and Coke Zero has become so popular that the, the literally the number of people buying diet Coke has gone down, and Coke Zero has gone exponentially up. Yes, I used to like Coke, but I didn't like the diet stuff. Yeah, well, you would like you would like Coke Zero. You would really like it's a Coca Cola Zero. product. It's yeah. it tastes like Coca Cola. Yes, Patrick. So what are they sweeten it with though? Uh, they sweeten it with uh, aspartame, you know, the same stuff. Uh, but they that stuff that's poison. Uh, but they're starting to use. Uh, hey, I've stevia. been I've been drinking stevia. I've been drinking that stuff for forty years now. Yeah, and, and you look like a seventy-eight year old. Yeah, right. right. Probably got three dicks too. <laughs> I got Pepsi Zero and sugar in front of me. Do you know what else? What else it has? What it has ginseng. It has ginseng. Ginseng. That's a Chinese thing, isn't it? Yeah, ginseng. Uh, but it, you know, I mean, I uh, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I'm, I'm waiting for it to come out because I would like to try it and see what it what it is. Remember the but, test is but I think the sure. reason they're killing Coke Zero is because they really want it. They said the reason they're going Coke Zero Sugar, okay, yeah. is because sugar has such a bad name now that they want to separate themselves because some people still thought that like Coke Zero had sugar in it or something because it was that well, you know you know what's going to happen to you alex you're going to buy these seven uh, uh, uh flats of uh of coke oh. zero and then you're going to try the new coke no you know sugar yeah and you well, no, say, i'm not going to go out and get seven flats because the problem is is that i the amount of time i take to go through um uh, coke zero uh if i wait too long it goes bad yeah. Well, what, what's going to happen is you get the seven flats, and then you get the new Coke, and you say, I like this better, and you end up not drinking the other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they can take the Pepsi it, challenge, it remember, on the commercial? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, Does, it, doesn't it, aspartame, turn, aspartame turn to what alcohol-type substance after a year or a half? I wish so? it did. Otherwise, it's it, it, really uh, nasty. It gets the nasty. pronunciation it, for it, that it, aspartame. Uh, aspartame. That's correct. Yeah, that's aspartame. aspartame. No, it's aspartame. No, it's I don't aspartame. Think so. I, I I know because I had to announce it once. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, I had a professor. He said he used to call it aspartame. Well, that's because he was a snobby fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know. Hey, Alex, I sent you a tweet. You yeah, you. Yeah, uh, don't send me tweets. Oh, okay. Just I don't. I don't read them. Ask Phil. I don't read them. Well, yeah. I took I took the tweet that Trump sent 
about Sessions, yeah. and I changed the names so Sessions is, is saying the same thing back to Trump. <laughs> Some of his own medicine, so. Fake news. Yeah, fake tweets. There it is. It's all, it's all <laughs> hey, no. Uh, Sessions is thumbing his nose at Trump, and I, I just really think Sessions knows that Mueller, he knows how good a job Mueller's doing, mm-hmm. and he knows that he's going to be there a lot longer than Trump is. Okay. He's outlive Trump. I have, I think he's I have sure a feeling that, that uh, Mueller is going to stall this thing until 2018. No, he's moving uh, right along. Yeah, but uh, he probably won't release any information until just before. Uh, there'll be just in, after. there'll be indictments. I'm sure there'll be. They got grand juries working on getting evidence too. That, yeah. I expect by the end of the year there'll be the, a couple indictments. Well, don't yeah. don't expect that there'll be one against Trump. Okay. Did, uh, you know, I, it, it you, doesn't really matter. You know what happens? What but, happens is that in business and in politics and in governments and so on, the higher up you are, the more insulated you are. Did Manafort you know? uh, say anything publicly yet? Uh, uh, has he did given testimony? He's given some kind of testimony, but no, he hasn't said anything. So. And oh, okay. No leaks. No nothing. No leaks. No. I wonder if the leak is coming. He's saying he didn't know Furtif, which is that guy connected to. Uh, the Putin money. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Dimitri, which is spelled a weird way, Furtif, who had all that money, and he owed the Russians all that money when he started on the campaign. So Yeah, you've somebody, said that, but I thought he was paid $12 million by the Russians. No, that's Turkey. Well, oh. no, you're right. He was, paid also, he was also paid by the Russians, but he yeah. still owed them a bunch of money because I think he was getting money for investments and some stuff went bad. But you know what's you know what's going. To, we're waiting for we're waiting for somebody to turn, either Manafort or Flynn or who knows who. Somebody's going to turn because Kushner is worried. Kushner's making he's he's running everything behind the scenes. Kushner wants Sessions out. Kushner wants to get rid of Mueller because Kushner knows what deep, what a deep hole they're in. Well, I know it's, I know I know what's going to happen to Jared Kushner. And uh, Shecky was mentioning this today. I can't remember the guy's name. But he was uh, Mussolini's son-in-law, and uh, he was by his side for 12 years until Mussolini had to go and leave Italy and start his own country. And at that point, right. Hitler, Hitler said, "Kill him," and so he killed his son-in-law. So that's what Trump's probably going to do, you know, eventually. <laughs> He's going to bump him off. Huh? It's like a mafia. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a mafia thing, you know. Uh, hey, we have we have the Trump crime family. I think, it is, I think really. it's wonderful because so, so, sir, who, who yeah, was it, yeah, Scott? Yeah. Who was it? What talk show always used to talk about the such and such crime family? Uh, Sopranos. Uh, uh, Mike Malloy used to use the term and referred to it as the Bush crime family. Yeah. Right. Well, this is this is if anything fits it's the Trump crime family because it's getting a look that way. Well, since they brought in that Saracucci guy, it looks like it. <laughs> well, what's that, what's that thing? Uh, something hold the cannoli or uh, yeah, no, no, take, yeah, leave, yeah, the, gun, take, take leave the, the gun, take the cannolis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy cannoli! You know, the, anyway, you, you I'm sorry. World, to, I'm sorry to all the people. System is a house of cards. Okay, anyway, I'm. Tr- I, I want to apologize to all the people out there who are watching this on Facebook tonight. It, it, for some reason, <clears> couldn't <throat> hold a signal. Uh, I'll try and patch this thing together with a video that maybe is coherent on some levels. We'll have a big chop in the middle of it, but what the hell. Uh, and, you know, it's technology. It will drive me to my grave sooner, more sure than later. Anyway, hey, listen, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Uh, pa- Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> Um, thank you, Rob, and of course, thank you, Brian. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll uh, see you all again uh, uh, well, tomorrow night. What about night. phone? What? Uh, what? Phone. Uh, uh, what? Tim. Uh, oh, Tim. Phil. Tim. I, I said Tim. Oh, okay. You, you just pay attention, Phil. Pay attention. <laughs> Everybody, wave goodbye. Okay, <laughs> and we'll see you all tomorrow night. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Same time, same station in life, as I always like to say. Uh, Let me get rid of this stuff so the next show can use it. And uh, I'm sorry, as I said, that there were some problems with the uh, with the picture, uh, with the with the video going out. But it seems to now that it has been going fine for a while. Uh, But you you can watch part one, part two, part three all the way up. Anyway, I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. 
uh, the intersection is next. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>